you're watching the Northern Miner, and we are here at the uh, PDAC conference in Toronto, the 2025 uh, conference. Uh, lithium has become one of the hottest commodities as the uh, world pushes towards electrification. But as it races towards securing supply, uh, we have North America also trying to reduce its reliance from foreign forces or foreign sources. And that's where I bring in my next guest from uh, E3 Lithium. He's the CEO, Chris Storenbos. Chris, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Thanks for having me. Listen, it, it really has been an eventful past two years or so, right? I mean, a lot happening on the macro side. You look at lithium and what it happens to its price from 2022. What's your take on what the lithium market is like at the moment? I think the lithium market is just still pretty mature. You know, like we only started really producing lithium for batteries in, you know, around 2014, 2015 and, and growing the industry from there. So, um, you know, with all of the new markets, they're volatile at the beginning. And I think that's what you're seeing. You we saw price spike to 70 or so thousand a ton. And now we've come down to about 12,000 a ton. Um, and a lot of that has to do with just growth in supply offset by demand at times, where it's imbalanced on one side and imbalanced on the other side. And uh, when you're looking at what's happening in the short term, I mean, um, the United States is turning on something like 400 and some gigawatts of battery capacity per year this year alone. Um, so the, the demand side is really starting to grow locally. Um, currently, a lot of the batteries that we're putting in cars today, even in North America, are coming out of China. And so we're building that local supply chain now in North America. Canada has been uh, announcing a, a bunch of uh, plants. We've got one turned on now uh, in Ontario. So we're starting to build our own ecosystem and industry here in Canada. So I think it's just, it's coming. I think it's the, the big thing. It's like there's so much uh, battery capacity being built out. All that requires lithium. And uh, so we need to bring a local supply of that lithium for North American for Europe. And, and that's where E3 comes in. Yeah, that's exactly where E3 lithium comes in. Let's start there with some of those projects. Right? You've got the uh, Clearwater project in Alberta. What's significant about that for you? Well, I mean, it's, it's a huge opportunity for Canada and for Alberta. I mean, we're, we're, our first plant's going to start at about 12,000 tons a year in scale to roughly about 36,000. Uh, we can build probably four or five more of those across the project area, and each of them will have a 50-year project production life. So this is a, a substantial impact to the Canadian market. We can produce, by 20, the 2030 numbers, we can produce the majority of what Canada needs uh, and a good chunk of what North America needs from the project. Obviously, we, well, it'll take us longer to scale to that production level, but we have that, that size potential in the province, and we operate like oil and gas. And I think in being in Alberta, being in an oil and gas province, um, the operational standpoint, therefore we permit like oil and gas, which is a very streamlined and transparent permitting system. Um, we have uh, the skill set. We're in a very good infrastructure area. Like all of those things, we build projects in, in Alberta just like this all the time. Yeah. On that line, you're building a demonstration facility. Yeah, this we are. phased approach. Yeah. Where are we with that at the moment? So it's being built right now. Um, the equipment's fabricating. Uh, We'll have it on site uh, sometime at the end of Q2. Um, and then it takes some time to set it up and get it commissioned. And so we expect to be operating in Q3 of the demonstration. And the demonstration is sort of two uh, pieces, um, both uh, two pieces of DLE. One will uh, test the process operations. The other one will basically build one commercial full-size system, single column, that will, that will operate just like the commercial, basically build... 119 more of those, and that's commercial operating. So uh, it's, a, it's a big technology prove out. The other side of it is that um, we're going to produce battery grade lithium carbonate at the demo, uh, which means we're being able to demonstrate that we can you know, produce that on mass at, at that scale, uh, but also be able to give that to our, our potential customers um, who need to see regular production of that over time. Um, as part of qualification. So pre-qualification can start effectively with that. It's interesting you answered that because I was about to ask you, you know, lithium hydroxide to carbonate, that's, yeah. that's in your process, right? What's, yeah. what's the motivation behind that again? Yeah, well, when you look at uh, the market today, there's been a big shift over the last couple of years to carbonate-based batteries. This would be LFP or mid-nickel cathode. And the world actually doesn't produce, in, at least in North, North, in North America, a lot of free trade carbonate. Um, so it's actually a pretty big opportunity. Uh, most of the hard rock projects convert to hydroxide. And when we looked at that, our process goes to carbonate first, and then we would convert to hydroxide. So we just were able to reduce a significant chunk of our capital 
and our operating cost uh, reduce a significant amount of our risk, therefore, by just going right to the battery grade carbonate. I see, Chris, also on your plate, um, I understand that the company has established Canada's first lithium in brine proven reserves. Yeah. What's that all about? Um, well, I mean, this is still uh, a nascent industry, and E3 is a pioneer on, on developing these assets in Western Canada. And so we put out a reserve report um, last year that out in 2024 pre feasibility that outlined a 16 million ton resource. And to give you an impact of what size is, um, is five times more than the rest of Canada's measured and indicated resources combined. So this is huge. And then with the pre-fees, we put out a 1.1 million ton carbonate reserve as well across the project, which is effectively the 32,000 ton initial capacity operating for 50 years. Um, and so that just gives you the size and scale. And if you look on our website, you see the, the little postage stamp of our project that that encompasses. You can easily see the scale potential that we have. Um, you're in an agreement with the U.S.-based Pure Lithium, and that's, yeah. that's the supply. We're jumping back to the concentrate, but that's the supply concentrate, isn't it? Yeah, the, the goal there uh, with them is, and what we're currently doing is working through uh, taking our chloride, our concentrate, and converting it into lithium metal. That's what they do. And then they put that, they plate that on copper, and then they make batteries with it. And our, and our combined goal of that, and, and we're just going through all of the validation steps right now, and that was what we announced uh, last year, the goal is to form eventually a joint venture on the southern end of our project area and uh, and make batteries in Alberta. And so I think it's a huge opportunity to vertically integrate by partnering. You know, we're not gonna develop a battery technology, that's not our skill set, but our process lends itself very nicely to their process, and so that synergy is very important. Now, presumably, you've mentioned a lot of this in your previous answers, milestones for 2024. Much of what you said would be included on that list, and there's more? Yeah, I mean, the big thing right now that the team is focused on is sort of two major project development aspects. One is the demonstration facility we talked about. The other is that we hope to, around the same time that that's turning on, submit our commercial facility license under uh, in Alberta under the AAR called the Directive 56 and our P application. And those two are really important because that sets the clock. And right now our best guess is about 12 months to get a permit based on historical averages that we see in Alberta. Um, and it's all provincially uh, jurisdiction, so for the permitting, uh, so we expect to have this project fully permitted by mid-26. And that's a huge advantage because, um, again, there's not a lot of projects that can move that fast through the permitting. And that's just a function of how uh, Alberta operates its, its permitting system. And finally, as I'll let you go, what else is on that yeah, future 2025 list that you have? I think the, the other big thing we're looking at is bringing a strategic to the project. You know, our first project capital is, you know, somewhere between 900 and 1.1 billion for the first phase. Um, obviously, for a small company, um, that uh, that's a big capital that we need to secure, and, and majority of it will come from debt financing. Um, but all of that de-risks with a strategic involved, and so we're out there right now talking to a lot of different companies on all aspects to try to find that strategic and bring them in. And we're looking for a good partner who wants to grow and build this project with us. And you know, th that could be someone in the mining space, in the oil and gas space, in the automobile space, in the battery space. Sort of the four quadrants that we're talking to right now. And I think it's a good time for us because, you know, we're about to finalize our, our, our technological prove out. And, and when we get our permits granted, I mean, there's nothing really then they're stopping us to starting to build. And so now, you know, a year out, year and a half out from there, from that, that's, it's a really good time to be out talking to those, those potential partners. Yeah. Well, interesting times and uh, good luck with that. Well, thanks very much indeed. Yeah. CEO thanks for having of, me on. Uh, E3 Lithium, Chris Storenboss. Uh, thanks for coming in. Yeah. Appreciate it.